verses for Sunday morning worship is dry bone in the valley. Mm. And I asked the question, can these bones live? And we're coming out of Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. Dry bones in the valley. Yep. Okay. Bless me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others I'll call me. Do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and this truth endured to all generations. I read Psalms 100 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word and edification of our souls. Amen. Most gracious turn of Father God. We thank thee then, Father, for this day. We thank thee then, Father, that you gave us another chance. Father God, we thank thee, our Father, for our health and strength once again to be able to say this prayer once again to thee, our Father. We thank thee then, Father, for our lying down last night and getting up this morning, see this a brand new day. We thank thee, our Father, for those, our Father, who, when they rose this morning, our Father, they didn't. Then rose with no kind of pain or envy of us others are this morning, our Father. But we just want to say thank you, our Father. And we ask you, our Father, look upon those, our Father, who didn't get up like I did this morning, our Father. Just look down on them and their family in a most special way. And we ask prayer for not only those on them, our Father, we ask prayer for the sick and shut in and those who are bereaved at this very moment in time. We ask prayer for our church family as well, our pastor and the first lady on that 20th anniversary, our Father. We ask you to look down on them and our church as well. We ask your Father, just trust us right now as we say his little prayer, Father. Father, this is my prayer. We ask all these blessings. In thy son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, we do pray, do ask. Amen. 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 Before I get into the lesson, I want to just offer an altar prayer. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, once again, we come before your throne of grace. Father, we come to say, Lord, we thank you, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. And we do so because you are the almighty God. You are the God that sits high and looks low. You are the God with the all-seeing eye and those unseen hands that cares and take care of all of us. Then, Father, there's so many that's sick among you, among us. We know you know who they are. You know their condition, and you are 
the doctor has never lost a patient. And Father, we, I'm asking that you just go in this sick room wherever they go and just take care and heal their bodies, Father, because we know that you can. Then Father, ones who are experiencing bereavement because of a loss of a loved one, touch their hearts, touch their minds and give them comfort, Father. Let them know you're true to your word and regardless of what the situation is, you're there with them and you will carry them through these days. Father, we all are in experiencing some dark valley days because of our society and this pandemic and its uncertainties. But Father, just touch our hearts and our minds and give us the comfort, give us your peace and let us keep our focus on you because you are in control of the situation. And Father, you said in your word, you are our protectors and you will keep us under your mighty wings. And Father, we just thank you so much, Father. Then Father, we just ask you to go with every person who is saying that they are believers in you. Then because we know that you're touching the ones who are yours and the ones who are not uh, in fellowship with those because that's who you are. You are God of love. Then, Father, as who we who will proclaim the message, do so in the truth and in spirit and in honesty, because the world needs to hear the word. They need to know that as the dry bones in the valley, we can live when we hear the word of God uh, preached and taught to us. And Father, speak to me, through me, as I share this message. That is some whoever hears, uh, turn back to you and say, what must I do to be saved? And that is accept your son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. These are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Dry bones in the valley. Mm -hmm. Can these bones live? That's the question. And beginning with Ezekiel 37, and I'll read the four, one, verses 1 through 14. And it reads as follows. You have it? Yes. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew, that's his strength, power, upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with the skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, the shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I had beheld, lo, the shinus and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me. And the breath came upon them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, 
These bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold my people, I will open up your graves and will cause you to come out of your graves and bring you unto the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then ye shall know that I am the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. My focus this morning is on these two verses. Three and four, and he says, Son of man, he asked a question, and these bones live. The prophet Ezekiel answered and said, Lord, do know it. And then he asked him, said to him again, I want you to go and prophesy upon these bones and say to them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So when I asked the question, of, it repeated the question, can these bones live? And the setting for the lesson is that during the time when Israel was exiled in Babylon and is known as Israel's history as the Babylonian exile, the Ezekiel was a young man in captivity when he received the call to prophesy. He and the prophet Daniel were young contemporaries of the prophet Jeremiah. See, Ezekiel's name itself means God strengthens. And he was from the priestly family uh, where he had spent his first 25 years in Jerusalem in a priestly training in the temple when he was taken captive. So the nation of Israel was in captivity because of their sin and their failure to repent and turn back to God. See, sin will cause us to suffer a lot. And see, my thing is, I, I, I want to try to bring out today's situation. Sin is running rampant today. And this message, happened back then because of sin. And we know the history of Israel. You know, God had been telling Israel, or warning Israel, or pleading with them to repent and turn back to me. God is long suffering, but even at his long suffering and his patience with humanity, he will punish sin. And we see this is what's happening to Israel uh, in this, this lesson, they was in captivity. And you know that they was in captivity for 70 years and God used a more wicked nation than Israel uh, themselves to get them and bring them into captivity. But even in the midst of being in captivity uh, and their suffering, God had a promise of restoration and deliverance and see, the magnitude of their sin was so dire that he looked upon it as dry bones in the valley. And I often wondered, where are we today? Is this, if our sin and the magnitude of our sins is causing God to look upon this nation as dry bones in the valley. Uh, we know, and we all who is over 50 or even some of us 40 know that the situation and conditions hadn't always been this bad. We know that there was time when we cared more for one another. We loved uh, uh, one another more. We were just love was being shown and on display more than uh, uh, seemed to be as it seemed to be. As there is no love, but there is love. But 
the overarching at sin has taken place and she will appear to have taken God out of the forefront of our lives and put him on the back burner. And God is saying to us today, as he was saying back to the nation of Israel, before he said, okay, enough of your foolishness, I'm gonna let you go in captivity. He's saying, I want to be first in your life. Out of all that I have done for you, show me some appreciation for what I have done, is doing, and will continue to do for your life. And, and I'll say this, if when there is no spiritual life, we can be looked upon dry bones. See, let's look at Adam. He was created out of the dust. He was just a bunch of dry bones lying there until God breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. Okay, point. And when he God told Ezekiel, I want you to go and prophesy to these dry bones. And that means open up their spiritual ears, tell them what thus said the Lord, preach to them the word of God so they will hear and come back to me. Okay. See, even if the situation seems so dire, and for the, some of the people in Israel and doing captivity, God always had a plan, a redemptive plan to deliver them out of their situation. Same thing today. He has a plan. He's going to be the one who's going to deliver us out of this situation. What are we to do? We are to keep focus on him and the ones who are been called to tell the truth, proclaim the word of God. We have to stand firm and strong and continue to proclaiming the word of God and giving hope. So we won't become hopeless and feeling that we are helpless. Listen, let me say this. We are never helpless and we should never become hopeless because of who we are and who we belong to. We are children of God and God has all power. He can do everything. And this is like he gave us his son Jesus to deliver us out of our sinful condition, our sinful lostness, he will deliver us out of our situation today and tomorrow. But we have to look to him and return and put him first in our lives. Now, um, and we, we and keep on the line of where when God gave his only son to deliver us from our lostness of being a slave to sin. He gave his son to as, as our redeemer. He is, he is the restorer of the breach that was caused by sin that separated us from God and our intimate relationship with him. Just as he delivered then, he will deliver now. And as he can deliver Israel out of her condition, because as we go through, we'll see that as... Um, Ezekiel could continue to proclaim the word. People began to listen and turn back to God. And they had they regained some hope and wasn't feeling so helpless because we get to the point and said, What can I do? And I'll go back to something that I always say. There's always prayer. We can always pray. We may not can do something physically, but son, let me say this. Prayer works every time. Yes. And, you know, uh, and just as, let me see if I can make this parallel. Just as God used Ezekiel, and he showed him in a vision about the conditions of the nation of Israel, even in captivity, he is showing different ones today, the vision and a vision, the condition of this country and this world. And as we can 
in Iraq and hear from others who are trying, who are standing firm on the truth of God's word and trying to share it as much as we possibly can. As we see that, honey, the world and our respective nations has become like dry bones in the valley. Mm -hmm. But he said, he said, listen, I want you to proclaim the word of God so that these bones can live, okay? And not be uh, without hope and without sin. And even though sin is ravaging, it is something about the truth of God's word. And when it is proclaimed, let me just say this. Some people are here and some people are listening and they are turning their lives over to God. Let me just give this example. Uh, in fellowshipping with this church out of um, Ghana and I get praise reports on a weekly basis, how people are coming to Christ and how other churches are being established and people are coming to Christ and they're giving their lives over to Christ. And it's because, and the, the minister, the pastor is preaching the truth of God's word. So the world is really wanting to hear but we cannot be caught up with the fact that sin has puffed itself up to make that it is to give us that feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. And now let me just reiterate that in Christ, we are never without hope and, and we are not helpless. Mm -hmm. Christ is our Savior, and he is our deliverer. God always has a plan to get his people out of situations. Okay? Now, uh, and I'll say again, there's something about the power of God's word. It will draw people to them. It will heal. It, it will it does re re energize their spiritual mind and reawaken their spiritual mind. Mm -hmm. And and it's something that I always say that even in the deepest and the darkness of depravity of our sinful conditions, God is not too far that he can't reach down and touch us and bring us back to him. Okay? Now, let me just make a point out of five, verse 5. And it points out, when God's word is preached, it will be God himself that touches the hearts and minds, God through his spirit, that will take on, cause them to take on a new life. And that when we, those, as I said, those bones will come together with a new skin because we have come, taken on a new life, a spiritual mm -hmm. life in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and we talk about Second Chronicles 7, uh, 14 quite a bit. And, mm -hmm. and this in verses 4 through 6 talks about a restoration. We see it from a political situation and we see it from a spiritual situation when people will turn back to God when the word is preached and taught and people will begin to turn back of all faith, regardless of who we really are, and we will begin to honor God in whatever we do, for and however we say, okay? And we can do that in our service and our worship. In our Sunday school lesson today, we just talked about uh, our neighbor being neighborly to people who we don't all necessarily know, or, or we don't, you know, but if we see there as a need, we're going to do something and what we can to help uh, supply that need. Okay, now let me just reiterate this point. When we are doing that and when we are continuing to proclaim the word of God, just like when Ezekiel 
as he was proclaiming, heard the rattling of the bones coming together because let me take it on, put it as putting on new skin, that spiritual life. Because when we are in Christ and we are, we are reawakening to the love of God, that is a joy that is shouting for joy, that is um, worship and praise like never before. Just imagine in our minds that when America come back and put God first and we come together regardless of the situation or the conditions that is before us, we are gonna come back and say, I'm gonna go praise the Lord today. I'm gonna to give him my time. That will be such a joyful occasion so yeah, there will be a rattling of the bones and you because of the shouts of joy and singing glory to his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so that same principle applies today when we look at how when the, the people of Israel days heard the word they came back in the shouting for joy and was praising God because they had been reawakening. They had found a new hope and a new life. They could no longer live, they were no longer willing to live in that sinful condition. Because once we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior and make God first in our life, we have put off all of those sinful and I'll say ragged, dirty clothes and put on uh, new clothes of righteousness, holiness, one that is willing to live a holy life before God. Let me close with this. I'm almost done. Verse 11. Uh, the dry bones of the, is the nation of Israel. That's why I asked the question, the dry bones is the nation of America. And I'm gonna ask this question. America, do God see us as dry bones in the valley? Are we listening to the preachers that they're telling us to repent and turn back to God, put him first in our lives? Do not. Let this pandemic and the corruption and the weakness and, and high places be our Babylon. So God allow us to stay in this subjective, adverse conditions. And Lord knows I wouldn't want to be in it for 70 years. God is waiting to heal our land. He's willing to forgive our sins. Because Jesus Christ paid our sin debt. But what we got to do is turn back to him. And we need to know this for sure. Jesus Christ is coming back for his people one day. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. We just know he's coming back. And we are to be ready when he comes. And all who have died in Christ will be raised from the dead and will return with Christ and will reign with him in the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So let me conclude with this. Dry bones in the valley is the sinful condition just as it was then, they are now. We who say we are in Christ must live a spirit-filled life so the world will know that we are children of the Most High God. We live this spirit-filled life by faith in God, trusting him regardless of the direness of the situation. Being children of God, even in the midst of our most dire situation, we are never to lose hope. We are not to despair. We ought to always keep the faith because God is our salvation. He's our savior. 
and he's in control of the situation. You know, you think that the God who created everything, both seen and unseen, would lose control of all of his creation? Or would you think he would not provide and care for his prized creation, humanity, whom he created in his image and likeness? I think not. He hears our cry and we cry out to him. He certainly delivers us. I don't know of any situation that I've gotten into that I was able to get myself out of. It was through humbly submitting I set myself to his leading and direction. He brought me through. He do what he did for me, he'd do for everybody else. Listen, you do not have to do, be afraid. You're not to have be, become hopeless and feel helpless because what? Jesus Christ, our Savior, have already overcome the world. And he is, well, has told us, do not, and why, do not be afraid. Why are you being afraid? I have already overcome everything. I took it to the cross with me. He said, now listen, I want you to be encouraged and leave all your cares and your fears behind. Just give them to me. I got this. See, being in Christ, we are wearing the righteousness of God. And we have a renewed mind and we are no longer through the help of the Holy Spirit confirmed to this world. We have, we have, we have a different mindset. And we can look past our, this, whatever the situation. And we certainly have been equipped to fight Satan. He has no victory over us unless we take off our war garment, faith, righteousness, peace, and put our sword down. No, we can't, we can't put our sword down. We have to keep our sword. Our sword is God's word. Yeah. Now, and when we turn back to God, and I'm through with at this point. There will be a spiritual reawakening like never before. People will be coming from the four winds of the earth, shouting joy and singing glory, hallelujah. And I often heard people sing about that great day. But let me tell you, when we turn back to God, even if it's just like it was in the old days, as I would say, when people didn't always have cars to get to church, they'd go walk to church. We have a church just about on every corner right now. We don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't walk to church. We so don't. We so don't. And we have the church sitting in our living room. We don't turn Hello. it over and go there. <laughs> For, you know, and the sooner that we can turn back to God, put him first, we're going to have a spiritual reawakeness. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for just being God all by yourself. Thank you for being a God of second chances. We thank you because you are God. You are love, you are merciful, and you are compassionate. And then you are forgiving God. Father, you are willing to forgive us. But Father, I ask again, touch a man's heart so that they will hear uh, the voice of your servants who are crying out in the wilderness to turn back to God. Hear the word of the God that they might be saved. And Father, I just thank you in advance for answering this prayer as we are praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. amen.
God be with you. God be with you. And still with me again. I thank you.